This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 6, Section 3, Periodic Trends. In this section, you're going to be able to describe trends among elements for atomic size, explain how ions are formed, and describe the periodic trends for first ionization energy, ionic size, and electronegativity. An atom doesn't have a sharply defined boundary, so the radius of an atom cannot be measured directly. There are ways to estimate the size of atoms. In one method, a solid is bombarded with x-rays and the paths of the x-rays are recorded on film. Sodium chloride, also known as table salt, produced the geometric pattern in the, in the photograph. Such a pattern can be used to calculate the position of nuclei in a solid. The distance between nuclei in a solid are an indication of the size of the particles in the solid. In this section, you will learn how properties such as atomic size are related to the location of elements in the periodic table. Again, this periodic table is an awesome, awesome piece of paper. Ha ha ha. So what does the word periodic mean to you? Pause the video and think about what a definition would be. So to me, periodic means things that repeat or things that happen in intervals. So what are some examples of things that happen periodically? Again, take a moment to think. So you should have paused the video and maybe you came up with some of the ones I did, like birthdays once a year, holidays usually once a year, Olympics every four years. Back in the day, people got magazines, but they were actually called periodicals because they happened periodically. Some magazines happened once a week, some three or four times a year, so it just depended. And think about that full moon. And I'm sure there's other things that happened periodically that you came up with. So then why is the periodic table called the periodic table? Again, take a moment to think. Hopefully this makes sense to you, right? Because of those elements and those elements have properties that repeat. And this is why those metals are on the left side. And this is why we can call the alkali metals group one alkali metals because those particular elements have certain properties that then are going to be repeated because of the order we're putting them in the periodic table. So make sure to pause the video and write in the um, words and then play to hear my thoughts. And again, read as you write. And I believe you should have also wrote that other sentence down in the slide before. So first, let's talk about a trend. If we're talking about periodic trends, what's a general trend? Well, a trend is a predictable change. Just like society has trends when it comes to clothes. Something that might have been very popular in the 1950s might be repopular in, let's say, the 2010s, right? So things are predictable. Those trends are predictable. Same thing in the periodic table. Since elements repeat properties, now they're going to form patterns. And those patterns are going to help chemists predict the chemical behavior of those elements, right? And if we're predicting the elements' uh, behavior, the chemical behavior, we're just talking about how they react with each other. So there's many, many trends that we can find on the periodic table, but there's only like three or four that you are responsible for in this course. I want to remind you about that Mendeleev guy. He's the first guy that put that periodic table together, and he did it by atomic mass. And as he was arranging his periodic table, remember he made blank spaces in his periodic table because he said one day an element's going to be discovered, and it's going to have these particular properties, these characteristics, and it's going to go boom right here. And the reason he could do that is because he made predictions on those trends based off the groups that he already made. So diatomic molecules are going to be really important because they are going to help us measure the atomic radius. And what do I mean by a diatomic molecule? Well, these seven elements will never exist by themselves. In other words, if I say to you, I need some oxygen to breathe, you are not breathing in just plain old 
O. You are actually breathing in O2. That 2 tells us that it's a diatomic molecule. So there are seven of these, and I like to remember them two ways. One is this name by the, uh, by the name of Cliff H. Brom. So Cl for chlorine, I for iodine, F for fluorine, H for hydrogen, Br for bromine, O for oxygen, and N for nitrogen. These are seven diatomic molecules that they do not exist by themselves. They either exist as a diatomic molecules bonded with, each, with themselves, or they have to be bonded with another element um, to make a compound. So they're written technically like this. So I like to remember Cliff H. Braun, but remember they're diatomic. So you need those little twos because that's actually how they exist in nature. Another way to remember them is using that periodic table. So if I notice over here, these guys right over here, N-O-F-C-L-B-R-I, doesn't that look like it's seven? Hmm. However, these are only six out of the seven elements. And then of course you have that odd man out hydrogen is also part of it. So those are two ways to remember these seven diatomic molecules. So what makes them so special? Well, again, if I look here at this little picture, I'm going to have two atoms that are exactly the same element. And that's going to help me go, okay, if I can measure from nuclei to nuclei, half that distance is going to give me that atomic radius. But guys, just to let you know that atomic radius and atomic size are going to be words that are interchangeable. So if I'm talking about atomic radius, I'm really talking about the size of the atom. So again, we take two atoms of the same exact element, we measure the distance between the two nuclei, because remember in that beginning um, paragraph, the atom really doesn't have a defined circle, right? That, elect that, that electron cloud is really just a big fuzzball, so we really don't know exactly that size. So this is the, the best estimation that chemists have come up with. So now we have to understand the trends, right? And trends tell us, hmm, as we go down a group, the size of the atoms are going to increase because we're increasing the amount of energy levels. So remember, period one only has one energy level. Period two has two energy levels and so on. So obviously, if we're gaining a whole energy level, we're going to be gaining size. Now, across the period is a little bit trickier. The size actually gets smaller as we go across the period. Now, why? Something called columbic attraction. So the positive protons inside the nucleus are attracted to the negative electrons in the uh, electron cloud. And what happens is as you gain more protons and electrons, that attraction with each other is going to increase. So if the attraction increases, Increases, then that means the atom is actually going to get smaller. So let's look at it visually. This is going down a group, and as you can see, the atom is getting larger. So look at your periodic table. Again, this whole chapter is about the periodic table. It should always be next to you. Um, so what group number is this? Hopefully you figure it out. It is group one, and what are they called? Again, pause and look through your notes. That's right. Group one has one word, and it's the beginning of the alphabet, so it's alkali metals. All right, now let's look at the trend going across a period. Notice we have sodium here all the way to argon, and what's happening to the size of those atoms? They're getting smaller because of the attraction between those positive protons inside the nucleus and the negative electrons. It's making that, that, that attraction stronger, pulling in those electrons. Um, and making the, the size uh, smaller of the atom. So what period is this? Again, look at that periodic table, and hopefully you came up with period three. So again, that columbic attraction is the attraction between those charged particles. So the more particles we have um, and the distance between them is going to tell us how strong that force of attraction is. So the stronger the force means that we have more particles, means that they're going to be closer together, means that that atom is going to be smaller. So if we look at this uh, as a visual again, obviously if they're closer together, we're going to have a greater force than when those particles are farther away from each other.
The other thing to think about is we have we have repulsion and attractive forces between those electrons and nucleus, right? So electron to electron, they're going to repel each other because they have the same charge, but those electrons to the positive protons or that positive nucleus, we're going to have some kind of attraction. So we have to account for both repulsion and attraction. So the columbic um, attraction is uh, between those electrons and nucleus. So now let's look at the graph. So if I look at this graph, these are groups and these are all of the parts or all of the, the, the elements in these groups. And if we look more specifically, uh, again, the size of the atom versus the atomic number. So if I'm gonna go from hydrogen to lithium to sodium to potassium to rubidium, I'm going down a group, but what's happening to the size of that atom? It is increasing. So now the Y, right? Electrons are gonna be farther away from each other. Remember that period number equals energy level. So there's gonna be less attraction from that positive nucleus and the and, and those negative electrons and so the atom is going to be bigger so now let's look at the periods again we have lithium to neon is in one period sodium to argon potassium to krypton and rubidium on so what's happening here well there are more electrons having more attraction to the positive nucleus so that's going to bring in those electrons which means it's going to make that atom smaller so pause the video read as you're looking again at that same graph and answer those questions hopefully you paused and came up with those answers all right, so again, the trend of atomic radius going down a group is going to generally increase and going across a period, again, is going to decrease. Again, I like to show you more visual so it kind of gets into your brain better. So if a halogen and an alkali metal are in the same period, which one would have the larger radius? So again, if we have an alkali metal, which is here, and a halogen, which is here, hopefully you came up with the alkali metal would have a larger atomic size and again just another, another visual so let's do these practice problems so I have a periodic table here for you but you might want to use your own so we're going to say out of these pairs so between sodium and rubidium which one is the smallest atom so pause see if you can find them on your periodic table Hopefully you found them here, they're in the same group. So we wanna remind you that going down a group, you get larger. So which one's gonna be smaller? I'm gonna circle Na. I'll do one more with you. So how about Na and aluminum? Well, Na you already found, aluminum is gonna be in the same period. So as we go across that period, the size is going to get smaller. So aluminum should be your smaller guy. All right, so pause and see if you can come do C and D on your own. So hopefully with C, you found those two. You figured out going down a group what the trend was, and you circled chromium. And then for tungsten and barium, you found them here on the periodic table going across the period, and that trend led you to tungsten being the answer. Okay, how about going the other way? Now I'm asking you between the pairs, which one's gonna be the largest atom? Again, pause the video and find chlorine and phosphorus. Hopefully you found them here. And out of those two, again, they're in the same period. So going across, you get smaller, but we're looking for the larger guy, so you should circle phosphorus. So again, pause the video and see if you can do B, C, and D. So for B, you should have found those two elements and circled tin because they're in the same group and as you go down you get larger and for letter c you should have picked mercury and for letter d you should have picked strontium because again as you go across the period it gets smaller and i'm looking for the larger guy so hopefully that makes sense and we should have more practice uh, with our book work in class so quickie quiz Oh, I gave you the answer. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Oh, no. All right. So uh, just wanted to make sure that you understood that uh, th these alligators, right? This is the bigger to the smaller. Uh, if you want to take a look at that uh, magnesium aluminum sulfur, where are they located on the periodic table? Are they in the same group or in the same uh, period? Um, and hopefully that makes sense to you. 
All right, we will see you in class.